In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to make animated chain links using rigid body physics in Blender. And using this setup, you can even move the chain links around and it's actually going to adapt in real time. So I'm just moving this around in the 3D viewport and you can see the chains are interacting. Now, if you'd like to learn the basics of rigid body physics in Blender, you can check out my rigid body physics for beginners tutorial. The link to that is in the video description. And you can also check out my physics tutorial playlist to watch more physics tutorials. So in Blender, I'll just delete everything and I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to add a torus for the chain links. Now if the chain link objects are lower poly, it'll be less laggy. So right behind me here on the add torus settings, I'm going to turn this major segments to 30 and the minor segments I'll turn to 10. So it's a bit lower poly. Now I'll press seven on the numpad to go to top view and I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to go into wireframe and I want to move this half of it out. So I'll deselect everything, hit the B for the box select, click and drag and just box select half of it. And I can just move it forward like that. And then I can select everything and I can bring it over back here. So the origin point is in the center. So now we just have a basic chain link. Now chain links do sometimes have a little bit of a bump here on one of the sides. So to model this, I'll press control R to add a loop cut and I can left click and right click so it stays in the center. Then I can press control B to add a bevel and I'll bring my mouse out and I'll just place it about there. Then I'll press control R to add another loop cut and I can scroll my mouse wheel until there are two and left click and right click so they stay in the center. And I can scale everything up and I can also scale it up on the X axis. I'll go back to object mode and I'll use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. So we now want to add rigid body physics to this object. So let's go over here to the side panel and we're going to go here to the physics properties and we can click on rigid body. So now when we press the space bar to play the animation, you can see the change just falls. And something that's really important is to click here on playback and on the sync here, you want to make sure this is set to play every frame and that'll be more important when we're doing the rigid body simulation. Now when modeling objects to the real life scale in Blender, the default objects are quite large. The default cube is actually a bit larger than an average human when modeling to the real life scale in Blender. However, I don't want to scale the object down. I want to keep it quite large because I find that rigid body physics works best with much larger objects. Because if the rigid body objects are too small, then when you do the simulation, then the objects won't be touching each other and there's going to be too big of a space if the objects are too small. So that is one issue. And another issue is that if the objects are too small, they can more easily fall apart. And so when you're doing the animation, the chains will break apart. So I found it's much better just to do physics animations at a much larger scale. Now, if I select the chain, press shift to duplicate it and move it over here, I can then rotate it on the x-axis like this, and I can now press the spacebar to play. But you can see these objects are flying apart. And this is because of the collision shape. So here on the side panel, let me just delete this object. We'll just use this one again. So on the collision shape here on the side panel on the rigid body settings, the default is convex hull, and this is a faster collision shape. So it's easier for Blender to calculate it because it's basically just making a simple box around the object and then using that for the collision type. However, this object here has an inside, and so I want to take the shape here and I want to change it to mesh instead. This way it's actually going to use the mesh's shape. So if I duplicate this, move it over, and then rotate it on the x-axis. Now when I play this, you can see they're both falling and they're not flying apart. I also want to add a ground plane, so I'll go to the add menu, let's add a plane, and I can scale the plane up and move it down. But if I press the spacebar to play this, you can see the chains just go through the object, and that is because this object also needs rigid body, so we'll click on rigid body. Now if I play this, the plane starts to fall as well, and that is because we want to click on the type here, and instead of active like the other objects, we want to change it to passive. So this way it still has rigid body physics, but it's not going to move, so it's basically staying in its fixed position. So I'm going to select both of these chains and let's rotate them on the y-axis by 90 degrees, kind of bring this up a bit. And then I can select both of them and I can duplicate them more and more and just kind of move this up here like that. And now I can just play this and I can get a nice pile of chains. Now, what if you want to have one chain up on the top here, which the other chains hang on? Well, to do that, we want to do the same thing that we did for the plane. So we want to set the type to passive. So I'll select the top chain and the type here, instead of active, we'll change it to passive. And now if I play this, you can see the chains are just going to hang on the top chain. Now, if I go back to the starting here to the timeline and then play this again, if I hit G to grab to move this around, you can see that it's not interacting when it moves. And that is because if we want to animate this or move it around while we're playing the animation, we need to check mark the animation button. And we just want to do that for the top chain. So now if I press the spacebar to play this and hit G to grab, you can see that I can move this around and the chains are going to adapt in real time. And if I wanted to, I could also rotate it so I can rotate the chain around and I could even scale them if I want to or just move that around and swing the chain around. 
Now, as this animation is playing and as I'm moving it around, it almost looks like it's moving in slow motion or it looks like there's very low gravity. And that is because these objects are quite large. If they were smaller, it would appear as though the animation is faster, but I want to keep these objects large because I find the simulation works much better. It's much more realistic and there aren't quite as many glitches or issues if the objects are pretty large. So to speed up the animation, we want to click right up here on the scene settings. And then we want to open up this rigid body world. And then there's a speed here. So I find that for this animation, maybe just turning it up to a 2 will work pretty well. So I can go back to the starting here and play this again, and you can see that's moving much faster. It looks like a real realistic chain. That might even be a little bit slow. I could turn the speed up to 3, and now I can play this, and that looks like a much smaller chain. And as you're moving this, if you move the chain really quickly, you can see it's going to break out of the other chain, and that's just because you're moving it so fast that it's moving in here, and then it doesn't know whether to go in or out, so it ends up popping out. So as you're playing this, just make sure you don't move it too fast, because if you move it too fast, you'll pull the chain out of the animation. Now let's say that you want the animation to be longer than 250 frames. So what you can do is you can drag this end frame up so it doesn't loop quite as fast, but you can see right after 250, the animation is actually going to stop. And you can see there's this little orange line here on the timeline, and that is telling us where the simulation is. And so it's telling us if it's basically baked the simulation here in the viewport as you're playing it. But you can see that it stops at 250. So to fix this, we want to open up the cache here, and you can see on the side panel there is a simulation start and an end. So for this end here, I could turn it up maybe to like a 500 or whatever you want. And now when I play this, you can see it's going to go past frame 250. You can also bake the simulation, which I'll be showing you later in the video. So now let's actually set this up for an animation. So I'm going to move the plane down and I can scale it up a bit more. Let's also box select some of these chains and I can duplicate them and rotate them, stick them over here, make it a bit longer, duplicate it again and rotate it so we have kind of a longer chain link, all right, like that. And then let's start doing the animation. So what I'm gonna do is select the top chain, and I'm gonna animate the top chain. And remember, this object here, if I go back over here to the physics, because I'm gonna animate this object, we turned on the animated button. However, the other ones, they are just gonna interact with the other objects, so the animated button isn't turned on. So for this top object, I'm gonna click on this button here to turn on the auto key, and I can hit G to grab and R to rotate, and you can see here on the timeline, it's gonna add a keyframe there. And then I can go to a later part in the animation, maybe move this down here, go to a later part in the animation, maybe like rotate it and move it over. And if I go like back here, just have that move down, maybe go to the top here, and I can kind of have it move and rotate, move it over here, rotate it over, and just make a simple animation, maybe even bring it lower, and then kind of bring it back up. So now that it's animated, I'm gonna click on this button here to turn off the auto key, and now I can just play this and just watch it go through, and it moves along here, and the chain falls along with it. Now you can see it is a little bit laggy, it is kind of slow, and if I play this by hitting the space bar, you can see there is this frames per second, and it is in a red number, and that is telling us how slow it is. So it is a little bit slow as it simulates the animation, but then once it gets to the end frame here in just a moment, it's gonna be much faster since it's basically already pre-baked the animation, and so now you can see it's gonna be much faster. So it doesn't look quite as laggy, and you can see it's playing now at 24 frames per second. And what I might want to do is actually go here to the end frames, and I might scale these down, just scale these keyframes down so that they move a little bit faster because I want to have the chain links kind of fly around. So if I go back to the starting and then play this again, you can see there's that little orange line there, and that is telling us that it's basically rebaking the frames. So we'll just wait for that to finish. And when it moves much faster, the chain link is going to move around quite a bit faster. So now I can play this, and the chain is swinging around. Now Blender does do a temporary bake here in the timeline, but if you actually want to properly bake this, then you can do that. So you can go over here to the scene properties, and then you can go down here to cache, and there's a simulation start and a simulation end. I'm just going to have it bake to like 225 frames. So here on the end frame, I'll just type in 225, and then I can click on the bake button. And it's going to go through here and bake this. And now I can play that and I can watch it move around. And then if I wanna change something, like maybe move the plane up here, I can click on delete bake and then bake that again. And now it's gonna go through and bake the animation and it has a loading bar there telling you when it's gonna be finished. And what's great about using this bake setting instead is that Blender's gonna save this baking data so you don't have to bake it every time. It's more like a hard bake. And as well as that, it won't be quite as laggy in the viewport. You can just wait for it to finish and then you can just watch the finished animation. And then one more cool thing I'll 
I'll do with this animation is I'm going to box select all of these chains here and I'll duplicate them, move that over there. Then I'll duplicate all of them again and kind of rotate them and duplicate them again and rotate them like this. So bring that up there and I can delete the bake and just play that and make sure that's working. All right, that's great. So then what I wanna do is take the first one here and this is the one which has the animated value. So with this one, it's gonna stay where it is and the chains can hang on it. So I'll duplicate this one and I'm gonna stick it over here, maybe rotate it, stick it right there inside that one and then duplicate this one over and I can put this one inside the other side of the chain. So now if I play this, you can see that the chains are gonna hang in between these two chain links. So that's going to be it for this video, so I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about rigid body physics and other types of physics in Blender, then definitely check out my rigid body physics tutorial playlist where I have lots more physics tutorials. So I have some beginner tutorials on physics in Blender like soft body physics and fluid simulations and cloth physics, as well as a plank tower simulation and rigid body physics for beginners. So definitely check out that playlist if you'd like to learn more about physics in Blender. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.